What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. In the previous videos of this series, we managed to solve many problems covering multiple aspects and potential exercises you may encounter in a coding interview. However, acing a coding interview is not only about producing the most optimal code, you will also be asked behavioral questions such as, tell me about this project or that internship, tell me about the time you were faced with a certain scenario, or describe a time when you had to do this or that, and how did you handle it, etc. All these questions and more are the subject of today's and upcoming videos, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing you'd want to do is recall several scenarios from your past experiences, situations at work that are favorable to you, or university projects you worked on, or maybe personal projects, and write them down. You see, most situations can be used to answer not one, but multiple of these questions. The second major thing you must do is be aware of your resume. Interviewers might go through it heavily and they will ask you questions regarding it. So, you must be sure that you can answer any question related to anything in there. Okay, let's go over a few examples now. These are questions that I have personally come across many times during interviews. So, first the interviewer might ask you, tell me about a project that you worked on recently, can you describe the technical challenges you faced and how you overcame those challenges? This is where knowing the ins and outs of the technical details of each piece of your resume really comes in handy. The interviewer may ask the question in a generic way like we just did, or they may point out a specific project or role on your resume and ask about that. So be prepared to talk about this in either scenario. Another question could be, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a coworker and how you resolved it. Here is where the interviewer wants to see how you handle challenging situations with your coworkers, so you want to focus on an area where you resolved an issue with them in the past. Even small disagreements that you had with coworkers can be used in questions like this. But if you truly can't think of anything, you could try to shape your answer into a more general way about how you would deal with disagreements with your coworkers. One major question that always pops up is, why do you want to work at our company? For this question, it helps to research the company beforehand, look into the company's values on their website, projects the company is working on, and the technologies the company is using. But keep in mind that the interviewer is not looking for someone that memorized their website, they already know what's on it. So just use this information, use your research as building blocks to shape your own answer. And usually a follow-up on this question will be, why are you leaving your current company? And here you want to give legit reasons for wanting to leave, but don't make it sound like you are miserable at your current job. That could hurt you in the negotiating process and could make you seem like a negative person in their eyes. Another angle to go at this question is to word it in a way where it doesn't sound like you really want to leave your job, but you would just rather be with the company you are interviewing with. So give reasons as to why you are excited to work there over your current company. So these last two questions can kind of be answered in the same manner by listing what you like about the company you are applying to. Another question about feedback, they love those, trust me, is describe a time when you received tough feedback or a time when you gave tough feedback and how did you handle the situation? Constructive criticism can be helpful for your overall professional growth. So consider answering this question with a piece of criticism you received and how it helped you improve your work. You can show your ability to react positively to constructive criticism and demonstrate that you're willing to learn and progress. On the flip side, being able to give good feedback to your co-workers is important as well. This really shows you are a team player and that you care about improving others around you. The same example that is used to shape the answer to this question can be used in the following one. Tell me about a mistake you made and what you learned from it. Everyone makes mistakes, but not everyone learns from them. The interviewer wants to see that you learn from your mistakes and grow from them. Think about common mistakes that engineers make. Ever ran a query that wiped out an important part of the database? How about messing up a merge conflict or force pushing something to the master branch? Don't be afraid to mention these. Okay, the questions we went through are great, but I still haven't given you answers to them. So let's do that next. You see, the difficult part here is that the answers can greatly vary from one person to another, as no two persons share the same resume, the same experience, or the same stories. But there is something we could do. There is a method or template we could follow no matter the question or our experience that will help us construct an answer and this template goes by STAR. The STAR method is a structured manner of responding to a behavioral based interview question by discussing the specific situation, task, action and result of the situation you are describing. In the situation part, you must describe the situation that you were in or the task that you needed to accomplish. You must describe a specific event or situation, not a generalized description of what you have done in the past. Be sure to give enough detail for the interviewer to understand. 
The situation can be from a previous job, from a volunteer experience, or any relevant event. In the task part, describe what goal you are working toward, what you are trying to achieve given the situation you are in. In the action, describe the actions you took to address the situation with an appropriate amount of detail and keep the focus on you. What specific steps did you take and what was your contribution? Be careful that you don't describe what the team or group did when talking about a project, but what you did. In this part, use the word I, not we, when describing actions. In the result part, describe the outcome of your actions and don't be shy about taking credit for your behavior. What happened? How did the event end? What did you accomplish? What did you learn? Make sure your answer contains multiple positive results. As an example, let's try to answer the question you see using the star approach. So you could go like, I recently worked on a project that had some very specific security requirements the application had to follow. At a high level, we had to build a server that could function as a reverse proxy and a forward proxy and allow us to add in custom logic during the TLS handshake. The obstacle was trying to find an off-the-shelf product that we could use for this. We have normally used Nginx for all our proxying and load balancing throughout the system. However, Nginx did not support a way to add in a custom hook. We investigated other tools, but nothing supported what we needed out of the box. Eventually, I found that Node.js has a module that provided exactly what we needed. This was my first time developing a production application from the ground up in Node.js. Going from mainly Java development to Node.js provided a bit of a challenge due to the asynchronous behavior of Node. The project ended up being a huge success and passed all the requirements. Additionally, these security requirements were not only within our project, We also had other teams within the company reach out to us for the server that I built so they could integrate it with their system as well, which saved the company weeks of development time. That's it. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a part 2 video for this one, in which we give more answers to several interview questions and further discuss the STAR method. So that's it for today. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next one.